It's the Ran One Radio Show. Okay, so we're back here with uh, Ramsey Dennison. And uh, for those of you that didn't catch the first part of our interview, this is the uh, director of the movie What Happened in Vegas. Now, uh, Ramsey, what's going on? Uh, not much, man. I mean, we just had a really successful screening at Freedom Fest. Uh, you were there, Mikey. Yes, um, it was great. Yeah, yeah, and it was really enthusiastic reaction. I mean, um, you know, the media was there, a lot of a lot of press, press and we were fortunate enough to win the Grand Prize Award. You know what I wasn't ready for, and I don't I don't want to ruin it. Well, I mean, unless anyone goes to another, maybe it was just because it was the Vegas premiere. But what was the craziest part about watching that? Um, premiere was the family members and the relatives and the friends of the people that were actually killed being in the screening right. and right. watching it with them, you know, and every time, you know, someone's part, you know, of the, of the movie would play, you would hear a different section of the room start to sob and have an emotional reaction. And I was like, man, that really made it real. Like that was crazy to me. Well, that's right. And, and I'll tell you, um, you know, I was, I was, kind of torn about that because on the one hand I felt bad that I'm subjecting them to this emotion that I'm kind of ripping Rhonda Gibson's heart out. Rhonda Gibson was there or, um, you know, and Tashi's family as well had a very emotional reaction. But the other part of me, um, felt like this, like there was a lot of people there who saw that the media was there and saw that. And, and I think it registered with them that, um, how much these people matter to their loved ones. And the thing that the LVMPD does constantly is try to write off the victim to save their own butt. Yep. You know? And so the LVMPD, time and time again, um, one of their most tried and true techniques is just to smash the character of the victim. I mean, they did it to Stanley Gibson, they did it to Eric Scott, um, and Kevin Vagina Man McAhill tried to do it to Tashi Farmer Brown, and I called him out for that. And... Uh, and, 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 and I'm going to continue to call out the LVMPD for this character assassination stuff. I mean, they're doing this for selfish reasons. And the reality is these people had, had people who loved them. And, and to just smash them and write them off, particularly in the case of Tashi Farmer Brown, where he literally went to an LVMPD officer for help and then um, ended up dead. Tasered and killed by that officer. And then this piece of garbage, Kevin Vagina Man McNeil goes up to the podium and, and just, uh, you know, talks about crimes from over 20 years ago. And just, so it's like, you've already killed him and killed him for no reason, I might add. And now you're going to smash his character to get your own self off the hook. Why? Because you're evil. Yeah. And because you're trying to get yourself off the hook and because you only care about yourself, Vagina Man. And, uh, you know, and I, I, I'm proud that I called him out for that. And I will continue to do so when they, when, you know, particularly when the LVMPD is 100% at fault, as they were with Tashi Farmer Brown. And it just doesn't get more evil than killing someone for no reason and then killing them again by smashing their character. When your officers were 100% at fault, by your own admission, that's, by the way, by the way that's why you charged Lopera with, uh, manslaughter and, and oppression under the color of, of law or office. Have you been and, up to, um, when, when is his, uh, have you been keeping up on his court dates and all his appearances and stuff like that? Yeah, well, I, my understanding, and I, I could be wrong, but, but I'm in fairly close contact with Trinita Farmer. Her and I have become really good friends. and I've become friends with several people in the Farmer family. I mean, they're, they're wonderful people, and I've also really come to understand who Tashi was and that he was a really good guy as well, you know? Yeah, the that LVMPD, was... The... Yeah, the LVMPD, and, and I think we made that clear in the movie. You know, I think we made that clear about all the victims, that these were good people who were killed unnecessarily, and the LVMPD um, was at fault, but did everything they could to get themselves off the hook. I got, um, to, I got to meet her at the premiere, you know, what... what, what oh, Trinita, or... or uh, I got to meet everybody, actually. You know, I made my rounds. I got to meet all the, you know, right. the people. And, um, you know, I even met, um, you know, Jay Jackson, who's the, uh, he's the chairman yeah, of the the new Black Panther yeah. Party. And he was, he had a small part where he was getting arrested on Las Vegas Boulevard in the movie. Right. You know, and like I said, just, yeah. just to see, you know, it's pretty rare, you know, unless you go to these film festivals and unless you go to these, like, you know, these, these smaller screenings at the festivals to meet, you know, a lot of times, like, you, you know, you'll go and you'll meet the, the characters or the cast of a movie. 
Now, right. when it's a documentary like this, it's a little more touching. It's not like you're meeting a paid actor, you know, and it's like, oh, man, I want to get a picture with you. That great job in the movie. Right. These are people who are just going through some horrible things. And, you know, they're regular everyday people. These aren't movie people, you know. And uh, like right. I said, watching I mean, them I mean, yeah, and hearing exactly, their stories yeah, exactly. in this yeah, movie and then sitting in the it. same room with them, yeah. you felt the emotion. You know, you felt it. And like I said, man, it, it just brought it home and it made it like – not that the video wasn't legit, but for me, it was just like, it just made it more moving, you know? And I was like, wow, what a powerful, right. what a powerful movie, you know, to sit here and watch, you know, cause it, uh, at one point we're watching the body cam footage of Tashi Brown, you know, and I'm uh, right. one row away from his mom, you know? And I was like, wow, this is crazy, right. you know, but it was yeah, a good, no, it was, it know, was and good. I, and I'm glad they were able to come to show, like you said, to show the media, like, Hey, this is, this is our loved ones. These are, these aren't just empty lives. These aren't, pieces of shit, you know, regardless of what, you know, small infraction he right. has on his record from 20 years well, ago. Well, the pieces of shit are the people who get up at the podium and assassinate their character, like Kevin McNeil. That's right. I call it a piece of shit. You know, and, and the just to... I can say about the vagina, man. You know, and anyone that didn't hear our first interview, you know, they, just to throw it out there and make it clear again, this isn't an anti-police, it's not a fuck the police movie, it's not an anti-establishment, it's not an anarchy movement, this is an anti-police corruption documentary. That's right. I don't hate cops. I hate bad cops. You know, and, and I watch you. LBMTV right now is, is you have bad cops running the department. And I, I mean, and I watch you and your team day in and day out defend that on social media. You know, and I right. get it. There's on the internet and on social media, there's the trolls that are just going to, you know, assume yeah. you're anti-cop like or you're yeah. anti-this, you know. And, yeah. and again, like I yeah. said, you know, you know, it's an anti-police corruption documentary. And that's what's so sensitive about it. And then that's also giving you some troubles and putting it in the theaters, right? Oh, yeah. Um, absolutely. Uh, you know, the, the LVMPD's influence is massive. I mean, they have a massive budget. They have massive influence. They, I, I believe their budget is over $500 million a year. And a lot of people regard the sheriff of Clark County, you know, who, um, you know, uh, as the first or second most powerful elected uh, or powerful person in Nevada. It's a okay. powerful job. Yeah, it's an extremely powerful job. And this, this person presides over, like, you know, one of the biggest money areas in the whole country. Yeah. And money talks in Vegas, and, 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 that, and the sheriff has power. And um, so we were originally planning on releasing Vegas, the, um, what happened in Vegas theatrically in, um, in Las Vegas in August. And we, you know, we contacted the Eclipse Theaters. Um, which is, you know, that the new theater complex downtown, really swanky, nice theater. And it's um, right, you know, it's right by contact, my office. Yeah, and I got in contact with uh, Ruth Jensen, who is the person in charge of like, you know, booking movies. And uh, I talked extensively with Ruth about the movie. You know, we sent her the trailer, the key art stuff, and she loved it. And then, and then, you know, and then, then I, I, she started, I think, reading some of the reviews and saw that this movie played it a lot of really good festivals like Cineclass and Newport Beach and just one of the Las Vegas Black Film Festival and, you know, a lot of great reviews, a lot of great press. And so they were interested in bringing the movie on board. I mean, I have emails from Ruth Jensen where she's discussing, you know, the possibility of a three-week run. And, 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 and then, you know, and then she's like, oh, you know, our staff just met about your movie today. We're, we're definitely really interested. Um, you know, and so... Like, there was this back and forth with the Eclipse Theaters for a couple of weeks. And, uh, and interestingly, as we were getting to the final stages, you know, where, where it was, like, pretty much getting close to, like, time to, like, put a contract on the table and, and, and ink the thing and set a release date, all of a sudden, and, and um, um, you know, and, and we contacted Ruth, and, and, she, and she said, oh, I'll give you a final answer by Wednesday. Um, you know, just to, you know, I, to, I just have to run it by... Uh, one more person, and uh, and I'll give you a final answer by Wednesday. I'll be sure to be in touch with you. And then, um, interestingly, um, in that email, she also said, oh, by the way, the LBMPD stopped by today. So the police department okay. went down to Eclipse. They went to the Eclipse Theater. Now, did you say okay. publicly that you were going to be at Eclipse? Is that what happened? No. Okay. <laughs> and that's and that's the, the most chilling thing about it is I was we were keeping it on the down low. Okay. We were not um 
telling anybody because I felt very strongly that the LVMPD you know, has been monitoring our website and, and that, the, that, you know, so we were keeping it quiet until, you know, it was signed. And so it was like on, on paper. And so that's what was so suspicious about the thing. You know, it was like writers were getting ready to like, you know, move to the next stage. All of a sudden, the eclipse, the, the LVM, a couple of LVMPD officers show up at the eclipse. Wow. And next thing you know, yeah, and so Ruth Denton, this woman who's been super communicative, who had several phone calls with, many emails, and had basically been wowed by our movie and very interested in bringing it, they'd had meetings about it, and all of a sudden, I can't get her on the phone. Um, I probably four or five emails, none of them returned. Uh, I have my business partner, you know, executive producer Randy Wild call her, doesn't answer, doesn't return the call. Um, so all of a sudden, they, it, and so finally I, I emailed the boss, you know, the owner of the Eclipse. Yeah. And, 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 and again, nothing, just nothing. And it, I just think it's really interesting that, uh, you just know, just totally blowing it, you off, and, not and, even and, giving and, you and, any and play. How did they know about it? Do you think they contacted the police or you said the police went there? Hello, Mikey, are you there? Yeah, I lost you for a second. Okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, what, what's really interesting here is that right around the time we were, you know, getting ready to move to the next stage and, like, get the movie set, set a release, you know, um, and discuss, you know, all of a sudden the LVMPD shows up, and then all of a sudden um, they are not, you know, we can't, they want nothing to do with it. Really? Um, I mean, I, 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 yeah, I think, uh, well, like I said, we couldn't get them on the phone. They wouldn't respond to emails anymore after being super communicative. And uh, I think people can kind of read between the lines there. Yeah. I think some things were said. And I think, you know, the movie tells the truth about the LVMPD. And I think uh, there's certain people uh, that don't like that. <laughs> and maybe certain people who have an election coming up and uh, who are going to be exposed in the film. You know, I mean, that's, that's my belief. Um, I, I mean, where else does it come from? They, you know? See, they're in a weird position, um, and, you know, them being the police department, because they're in the position where they feel like they have to do something. So when they do something and when they talk about the movie or when they do anything, they're just helping you out. You have the upper hand with, you know, the PR right. and the media side right now. And if right. they do nothing... But you have free will with the media. So they feel like they, they're in a weird defensive position, don't you think? Well, yeah, I think they, they, they are, but I, but I don't think they were in a defensive position here. I think they, uh, <laughs> my opinion is they, they, they took the ball and ran with it and, and, and things were said and all of a sudden the Eclipse Theater, you know, I, I, I'll just flat out say it. It's my belief that they were intimidated out of showing the movie. I think anybody with common sense can see that. Yeah. I don't think it's a coincidence. And but the big the thing that's chilling about it is how did they know about this? Because like I said, we kept it quiet because I was afraid of this exact thing. You know, I didn't put about in fact I even noticed that a couple L B M P D officers were on our page and I you know, I started clicking through and, and, and kicking those people off our page, blocking them because I felt like you know, and so we didn't post any, we kept this quiet. We told nobody. It was, it was me and the executive producer, Randy Wiles, are the people who knew about this. And then all of a sudden, um, they, you know, the LVMPD shows up. It's my belief that, and I've heard this from other people who've had experiences with the LVMPD, um, that they're, they're, they've been monitoring us. That's my opinion, okay? I don't have proof of that, but... How did they know about the eclipse? I, you know, I believe that my emails are probably being looked at. Possibly my phone calls monitored. Hell, they might even be listening right now. So you I think they might have went as far as to doing a wiretap, possibly because they. Well, well why do you think that? Do you think know. they? You think they see you as a threat to them, or? I mean, I think the movie tells the truth, and I then they see it as a, as a threat because they. The fact of the matter is, they're a wildly corrupt police department, and my movie calls it out and proves it. I mean, I mean, you know, there's nobody, even LVMPD officers on the down low have watched the film and, and just said, you know what, <laughs> everything in here is 100% accurate and 100% true. Um, you know, I, uh, I don't take journalism lightly. 
Yeah. If it's in the movie, it's true because you know you can't. I mean, when you no, this movie, isn't this isn't some fake yeah. news. Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, I mean it can't be because we, you know, we had to get heirs and omissions insurance. We knew, we always knew this was going to be a real release. This thing was going to see the light of day. It was going to play at theaters. It was going to, you know, play on TV, and it was going to get out there. So, you know, the movie's true, and I think the movie tells the truth about Joe Lombardo. And I think he doesn't like that. And he under, and he has an election coming up. And, and you know, when he's asked about the film with the press, he, he, he just says no comment. You know, the LVMPD has, has, been, has not been commenting on the film, but that doesn't mean that they're not doing things behind the scenes. And I just think it's really interesting that uh, as we're getting close to solidifying a deal, all of a sudden they show up at the theater. And then I'll tell you something else, and that's not the only example of, um, um, something else interesting happened. Uh, there was another guy. So after that whole thing fell apart, we started looking for another theater. And there's another guy in Vegas. I'm not going to name his name. That's fine. Um, but but he owns he owns a theater, and uh, he happened to be. You know, we contacted him. He was interested. He um, and he happened to be. Uh, you know, coming down to LA, and so I met up with him at a restaurant, Marina Del Rey. And, uh, and we talked for a couple hours. We hit it off. And, uh, and I said, oh, I'll tell you what. It's playing at Freedom Fest in a couple weeks in Las Vegas at the Paris Resort and Hotel. Why don't you come and check it out? If you want to um, book it in theaters, then, then, you know, then that's the perfect chance. You come check it out. And then, you know, if you want to go from there, okay? So he says, sounds good to me. He shows up at our screening at uh, – and it was a great screening. I mean, you were there. It people was amazing. By the film, there were people crying. The press was there, and and as he was walking out, he he just looked at me with this like smile on his face, and he just says, "I'm in," you know. Oh and wow! Then walks out, yeah, and then walks out with this lady, and then uh, and so he he obviously reacted very well to it, and he was interested in the movie even before that, and then uh, you know, so I you know about a week. And a half later, you know, after we won, you know, the grand prize at Anthem and there was all this, you know, press out there about the movie and it was nothing but strong, good press. There's um, all of a sudden, I can't get a hold of this guy. Oh, really? He's yeah, blackballed you know. Yeah. yeah well, 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 I don't know. Uh, you know, but, but all of a sudden he's, after going from being interested and, and smiling at me at the screening and saying, I'm in, you know, and we, and I'm, all of a sudden, like, I can't, um, he, he's not responding to my texts and emails. And, um, and I don't, so, so this is a second time. And, and, and after in showing this huge initial in, um, interest, all of a sudden these people are backing out. And I, you know, I just want to leave you with the idea that, <laughs> you know, I mean, remember, you know, the sheriff is a powerful guy. Um, yeah. You know, and a lot of people think he's one of the most powerful people in Vegas. And I just, I don't think, this is an accident. I think the LVMPD, you know, um, well, well, on the, you know, publicly is kind of like presenting, like pretend, like not commenting on the movie. I think there's, it's my opinion that there's things going on behind the scenes. You kind of have to, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty hard not to put two and two together. With Definitely. Series of, of, yeah. And, and I don't know. Also, Mikey, did you notice at our screening, did you notice there were two LVMPD officers outside our screening in uniform yeah yeah in uniform okay so yeah so at our screening you know there's two lvmp officers just hanging out outside i don't think that's an accident either you know i think uh and um well there's you know, the so many people I that were there that might be you know also be monitored by the police you know um you know the, the like i said the black panthers were there there was a couple other you right. know activist groups right. were there so, I mean, definitely I could see where there's, you know, yeah. there's definitely some police chatter on, hey, let's keep an eye on this and make sure it stays, you know, civil. Right. Because up until the movie was released, you know, even before I originally saw it, too, I'm wondering, like, what's Randy got up his sleeve? What, you know, and, and you were honest and you said what it was going to be and that's what it was. But I could I could see in their eyes where they're like, okay, let's see if he's going to, you know, have any surprises for us or if he's actually going to deliver that, you know, anti corruption message or if it's going to be just anti-police you know and then right. what you did was you delivered the anti-corruption you know and, and right. you know if, if you feel bad about it then maybe you're one of the corrupt people and you should feel bad that's right if you don't feel that's bad right. about it yeah. 
Maybe you're one of the people that wants to see some changes, you know, some positive things come from the next election. But I don't think right. I don't think there's going to be a change in power many, in this next election. Right. How many of the good cops have actually LVMPD cops, good LVMPD cops have reached out to me on the down low? As a matter of fact, just today, I got hit up by an LVMPD officer on the Internet, and he just said to me outright, he just said, hey, listen, I mean, I think... Uh, I think your movie's on to something. He says, I think, I think you're, you're on to some of the right things here. He says, you know, I mean, um, and, and that's been happening. I mean, I have had a lot of LVMPD officers and former LVMPD officers. Now, they can't be very public about it. but they, No, it'd be worse than being a, it, it, yeah, it's yeah. like being a Republican yeah. in Hollywood. Because you know, you're just going to be quiet. They, yeah, yeah. And so, and so they, they do it on the down low, but basically... Um, you know, there are people at the LVMPD who are behind this movie because they understand it's not anti-LVMPD. It, it, it's pointing out that the bad cops in this department are getting away with it. And it's my belief that that's because the leadership is corrupt. I mean, the second in command at Metro, Kevin Vagina Man McMahon, has a ridiculous path. I mean, yeah. you know, um, I, 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 mean, I mean, this guy... And I've talked to other officers, um, very reliable officers, respected officers, who have told me that Kevin McMahon l- lied, threw them under the bus, did whatever he had to do to, like, rise and, and um, you know, that this is a guy who, who does what he needs to do. And, uh, you know, and, and it was Kevin McMahon who got out there um, and assassinated Tashi Farmer Brown's character after, you know, the LVMPD killed him. Yeah, and their own department says it's unjustified, and the vagina man goes out there and smears him. So I have no use for this guy, and I think when somebody like that is the second in command at your organization, somebody that other officers feel is a liar, somebody without integrity, somebody who is a fraud, is second in command of the department. I think it sends a horrible message, and I think a lot of LVMPD officers aren't behind that either, because you know, I mean, the fact of the matter is, and you have to ask yourself, why aren't there are a lot of good officers in the LPD. Why aren't the these majority? Seconds? And this is the problem. You know, and it's funny because you, know? you could argue with strangers all day long on the internet before you just feel like you wasted your whole day. Right. You know, but we yeah. all know, and society knows it, and even the people that hate the police deep down in the hearts, they know the majority is good. That's right. You know, the majority of right. the police so department, is, and that's that's across the board nationwide. The LVMPD, the second in command. You know I what mean, I mean? You and, know what I mean? Like, why is this scumbag? second in command like why did kevin mcmahon rise from the top you know and that's I what i was getting at if the majority is good the if the majority you know? is good and the minority is bad that's a good thing but when the minority of it is maybe in charge you know what i mean that's so a hard thing to overcome thing. that's what the i'm the saying liars are running thing, and that's know? hard to overcome you know and that's if, if that's yeah. what's really going on and that's you know what the track record you know that's what you're laying out in the movie and it has it has people scared. I mean, people are scared. And I encourage anyone out there, like I said, before we did our last interview, I hadn't saw the movie yet. Now I've seen it. Right. And I, I right. keep telling people, and everyone I talk to about it, and I keep sharing the post on like this is a powerful movie. This is Thank this you. is something to really think about. This is a well thought out, well executed plan. And it was it, you Thank know, you. and even with the you know, the length of it, it was a little longer than I thought it'd be, but it felt like Are you there? Yeah, can yeah. you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, you know, and it was just, um, you know, I just tell everyone, like, you know, he really packed it all in there. You know, and there's there's a lot to take in, but just right. be patient, absorb it, because what's in there is, it's, it's crazy. You know, the Eric right. Scott thing, to, you know, seeing the interviews with his family, and then meeting his family at the movie, and then, you know, going back and reading the old articles, reading what the press and the media put out, you know, the, the you know, the whatever they are, the spokespeople for the department and, and what was reported and what was actually said in the media at that time, it was a bit crazy because, you know, right. no, it never it. came out. Yeah. The media never said it. The family's well, the, the ones that have said, you know, Metro. the media is afraid That's of Metro. The fundamental problems. They're a bunch, you know, they, they're, they're, they're scared of Metro. Metro has massive power. And, um, you know, I talked to a guy, you know, I've talked to many Vegas journalists over the last month and a half, and I talked to a guy. He told me that Joe Lombardo stormed into the office on three separate occasions trying to get him fired. Really? Yeah. And so, I mean, now think about that. You know, like, 
It's tough, man. That's, it's really that's tough. Scary. I mean, this dude's trying to, you know, he's trying to pay his bills. You know, he, he might have a family, you know, house, and he's trying to pay his bills and tell the truth and keep his, you know, and, um, and this guy's storming into the office because he doesn't like what's being written about him. Well, you know what? What's being written is the truth. Yeah. And, and you might not like it, Joe Lombardo, but guess what? This isn't third century Russia, and you can't just go chop off somebody's head or get them fired. Because you, you don't like what they say. Because you're a scumbag and, you, and you, you want to do that to anybody who disagrees with you, but it's not. It's not third century Russia. We have freedom of speech in this country. And, you know, I think it, said, it says a lot about Joe Lombardo that he has made his way down there and marched on in um, and tried to get a journalist fired for reporting the truth. Now, you know? we've had some situations. I don't want to get off the topic of you, but just to, just to go into what you were just saying, you know, I have that small media company. We keep track of everything local here in town. Right. You know, we have that Facebook page, and our Facebook page is about like forty thousand members on it. The thing right, that's u- the thing that's unique about our Facebook page, and the media doesn't like. Now, mind you, we've kicked and blocked a lot of the media out of there because what they were doing is because we're so fast and aggressive on all these right. stories. I mean, you've how many times have I called you with something before it's even hit the news? You know what I mean, like the regular right. news. So we, what they've done was they used to use our page as a you know a poaching point for themselves to get stories. And right. also, because we let the members of our page post, you know, it's, uh, you know, we call it like, it's called the We Media, you know, and it's like right. you and I, you know, so everybody that's out there can become a journalist. You know, if you're on the scene of something, they're posting on our page. They don't like that. You know, and I've been approached and spoke to by law enforcement of several local departments um, and other me- members of the media like, hey, man. You know, letting letting someone go live on Facebook and putting it out to an audience of forty thousand people—that's not a good idea. And I'm like, why not? You know what I mean? Well, that's journalism, and it's you know, and, and it's uncensored. So, well, not only that, but like, I think what Joe Lombard, what, what they forgetting is they work for the public. Yeah, you know, so it's like, you know, so so you you should be allowed to go live to the public, and um, you know, and what are you hiding? Yeah, you know? and it's so crazy. That's like, question. if you don't if you don't want them to go. Um, live, then why? What are you hiding? You know? I remember like, uh, I was monitoring the police scanners the night that the Tashi Brown thing happened. Um, I was listening to it live. I listened to that whole thing from the original, you know, part of it to the end. I, I listened that thing through and through, and I just was like, wow. And then that last one um, yesterday, we were on the phone, that, that one happened yesterday. You know, and I was listening to that one. That one's insane, you know, not to get too far ahead of ourselves, but. Right. You know, that one was, you know, and I don't know, I haven't seen any real, you know, press releases, and they definitely haven't released the body cam footage on that one yet, but it, it seemed like it was another crazy officer-involved shooting. Now, you know, just to, to say that we're talking about that, there was also a couple, you know, where, where you and I both were like, well, that's that was legit. You know, like, that was justified. There was, you know, so we're, you know, you definitely, you know, are not saying every time the police kill someone, it's it's out of malice or it's unjustified. No. You know, you, definitely not. But but I do think that they are, they're too quick to shoot. Definitely. I mean, and, and I think they're and, and I, I think in general, they um, they're, they're they're extremely ill equipped to deal with like the mentally ill or, you know, just I mean, frankly, you know, if somebody called the LVMPD's approach thuggish. It'd be hard to disagree with them. Yeah, I mean, it's they're, aggressive. They're it's just, aggressive. They're, they're, they're aggressive. They're just hammer, hammer, hammer. Very little compassion. Very little attempt to. I mean, take a take. You know, we haven't seen the body cam footage yet, but you know, you listen to that helicopter scanner footage that I did. They, you know, and 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 the guy said, you know, oh, he's put down his weapon. He's walking um, away from the weapon. He's walking uh, north away from the weapon. Yeah. And then a couple minutes later. He, he shot. Yeah, know? that's what, that was the next thing you heard was shots fired. Question, you know, and then they, they said that he's running back. He was running in the direction of the weapon, or they said he's running towards the weapon. Well, shit, that doesn't mean he's going to go grab it and pick it up. Yeah. I mean, you know, but what I don't understand is, you know, my God, you got helicopters out there. They must have had dozens of LVMPD personnel on the scene, a barricade situation. Why can't you just, I, I don't understand why they couldn't just run up and tackle the guy. Why'd you have to shoot him? Yeah. You know? Well, that was even, why, the, that why, was why even on the, on the, yeah. you know, they said you could well, go up to him from behind and just grab him, you know? 
Well, not only that, but like the guy was walking when, when he didn't have a gun. Why didn't somebody just rush out there, you know, a couple officers and just get him on the ground? I think you know? he was even naked, why, too. Why does it have to end up? Why does it have to end up where you shoot him? Yeah. And I think that's what the LVMPD does a lot of. That's really un- that, 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 that agree. I mean, they just have very little patience. They're just hammer, hammer, hammer. I mean, they're kind of like the bully on the playground. It's just thump, thump, thump. The answer is always, you know, the hammer with them. Yeah. And I think they need to be, they need to get better at, at um, de-escalating the situation, but I don't think that'll ever happen because it's this, tough, man. It's a, it's a tough climate. It's poor at holding their officers accountable. I can't think of another police department who holds their officers less accountable than the LVMPD. I mean, Brian Yant falsifies a warrant, um, shoots somebody for dumping marijuana down the toilet and still makes money in law enforcement. That piece of crap, he belongs in prison. And, you know, and, and, and not only is he not in prison, he still works in law enforcement, makes over 100000 a year. I mean, that guy should have been doing 20 years for that. That you was, uh, I forget the name of that one, but that was the, yeah, they did the no Trevon knock rate. Yeah. That was Trevon, Trevon Cole. Trevon and Cole. His was, family was at the screening. In, in my view, that's one of the most egregious killings in the LVMPD's history. And I spoke I mean, to someone was, from the family, and I think there was a large settlement on that one. I think the family got paid. You know, and I think I, it was one point seven million dollars. Yeah. That's the other thing is, that and I remember talking to the family, yet. and yeah, you know, they were just like, you know, fuck the money. You know, that doesn't bring him back. Yeah. That baby never got to meet her dad, and you know, all that other stuff. Because that's, that's right. You know, he yeah. was she was just trying to get a little bit ahead because his girlfriend was pregnant. So it was and just crazy. Because like I said, I got a chance. Don't understand how little, you know, like they actually care about the money, man. And that's the other. You know, you really see a lot of people really insensitive. They go, oh well, he got his money. You know, it's like, you know, they didn't care about the money. They were living their lives. You know, Rhonda Gibson was living her life. She loved her husband and all of a sudden her husband's dead, you know? Yeah. And like, there's a percentage of the population who's really insensitive. Now that was the one, she has her money. That was the one where they made a statement and then someone came forward with video after the statement, right? Uh, That's right. Yeah. That was the one where Dirty Doug Gillespie went out on the podium and said that, uh, that, uh, that Stanley Gibson was using his vehicle as a battering ram and officers had to defend themselves. And uh, what he didn't know was that some teenage girl was videotaping the whole thing with her phone and that that video had uh, <laughs> got on Fox News before he could... Uh, and so he wasn't aware of that. He wasn't, they weren't aware they were being videotaped. Yeah, that's what I mean. They so, made a statement. And, and so, <laughs> so he got up there and lied. I mean, you know, which is something that Dirty Doug... It's certainly done. You know, and, and, and it was it was no. crazy because, you know, and, and not that not that everyone's reaction, you, you know, it, your film attracts a lot of different crowds. It does, excuse me, right. it does attract the, you know, the, the anti-police crowd. It does attract, Very much so. and it also, but it also attracts the, the pro-law enforcement crowd as well. And it was, it was right. cool to see the panel, you know, after the, the, the Q&A panel that you guys had afterwards. You had some really smart and intelligent people up there with Those you. Those guys were great. You know, I there was a before, but they were great. Yeah, yeah, there was a guy from DC that was just you know really intelligent when he talked about community that guy policing. Was awesome. You know, yeah, and and, he was a former officer, man. Yeah, you know, yeah. but he had I think you know he was a former Baltimore officer, and he was just you know, and he was a really like fit guy. Yeah, cool. You know, like like he, you could tell this guy was probably one hell of a cop. You know, yes. back in the day, but even he was sitting here going, "Law enforcement is broken. It's dramatic reform." You know. And this isn't just some guy saying it. This is from a guy who was like a cop for over 20 years, man. Yeah, I mean, he I flew mean, in from Maryland to watch the movie. <laughs> so yeah. it was yeah, really he, cool. He actually came up to me afterwards and said, great job, you know? And, and so it was, it was interesting. I mean. It's like you do have cops who enjoy the movie and who are behind the movie, and a lot of them have to do it on the down low, but because they, I think they recognize, because the truth is, like, most officers are good, and the good officers don't like bad officers either. You know, Correct. they don't like, I mean, do you think people in the LBMPD are like proud that somebody like Brian Yant worked on their police force? I, I mean, or, or worked on, uh, of course not. They think he sucks. They think he's a disgrace. They think that he ruined the name, their good name. Um, they don't like officers like Brian Yant. No. Um, because, and it's, so it's, you know, it's not that, I mean, these guys, you know, they want 
I, I do believe a lot of cops get into being cops for the right reason, like that they want to help and want to do good. And I think it really pains those cops when, um, you know, when they see officers who didn't get into it for that reason and didn't have good intentions and are bad cops. I mean, you know, I have personal experience with a bad cop, one of Vegas's worst. I mean, Mark Bellinger. I mean, this piece of crap. <laughs> I called 911 to report police brutality because I saw him and his boys um, roughing up a handcuffed suspect and telling him his mama raised an F up. Yeah. And, uh, and he, he comes over, asks me what I'm doing. I said, watching what you're doing, nothing right about what you're doing. So I called 911 and told him about it. And next thing you know, Ballinger and his, his fellow thugs, uh, um, Kyle Fred and Jared Casper, like beating the crap out of me. You know? It's crazy to and think I mean, if that didn't yeah. happen, if that never happened, this movie probably right. never happened. No, the movie wouldn't have happened. And, and so, you know, I think, um, you know, I, I, I think that the LBMPD needs to realize that, you know, this happened because of your ridiculous and absurd ability to, like, discipline your own. You let Mark Bellinger, Kyle Fred, and Jared Casper literally get away with beating up, arresting, and throwing someone in jail after they called 911 to report them. I mean, that's literally what happened is I made a 911 phone call to report police brutality against a stranger, and Mark Bellinger, Kyle Fred, and Jared Casper beat the crap out of me. They doubled down. It, and then the video mysteriously went disappearing, and they decided that was okay, you know? Internal affairs, you know, Detective Michelle Johnson, and Christopher Little, they thought that, they, they concluded that was okay, that the LBMPD was justified. Well, you know what? You're a bunch of idiots. You know, did, did the other guy go to jail, or did he get off because they were too busy with you after that? The first guy, the guy um, that you called for, did they end up taking him in too, or they just let him go? I'm sorry, say that again? The guy that was they were beating up, the reason why you called 911 to report police, right. did they end up taking him to jail too, or did he end up just getting let go? I'm, no, I'm sure he went to jail. He was <laughs> okay. handcuffed. When oh, were, okay. So, so he was like bent over the front of the police car, and they were like tugging on his tusks. Gotcha. His head off. It looked to me like they were cutting off the circulation. They were, like Ballinger and his scumbag team was like laughing, telling him that his mama raised an F up. And, uh, and that's why I called 911. I said, hey, man, this is excessive. You got, you got a group of officers, instead of getting this guy in the car and getting him down to jail, like they're laughing at him and telling him his mama raised an F up. You got to get a sergeant and a lieutenant down here. And instead what they did is, beat up the guy who made the 911 call and then lie about it and and then the video disappeared and i'll never forget reading that police report for the first time and being like wow this is complete bs these guys lied you know and then i reported to internal affairs and and because they sucked too <laughs> they decided that was okay you know yeah I mean, you just can't say enough about um how corrupt this department is at disciplining their own officers, how ineffective they are, you know? And I mean, it wasn't a big surprise to me when I heard that, you know, Michelle Jots now works for like the union because obviously that's who, that's what she's interested in is like back in the badge, no matter what, you know? Yeah. So think about that. You had this officer who worked in internal affairs. They're supposed to be the beacon of integrity, you know, like they're supposed to like, but ultimately, who do they work for? The LVMPD. So you're reporting a department to themselves, and they conduct their own investigation on themselves and conclude that they did nothing wrong. Well, that's a bunch of crap. Yeah. Anybody with a lick of common sense can see there's something not right about beating up a citizen after they called 911 to report police brutality against a stranger. But, you know, Michelle Jots and Christopher Little and their scumbag team of, um, decided that was okay. And... Uh, you know, and that's and now Michelle Jots works for the union, where she gets to um, lick badges all day long and, and um, help <laughs> help the fellow officers. You know, since that's clearly what she's about. And and uh, you know, so I you know I have no respect for officers like her. No. I, I have no respect for Christopher Little. I have no respect for Internal Affairs. And I think you know when an Internal Affairs Department is that broken and that corrupt that they're letting officers like that off. That's a useless department. And that, you know, and, and you have to question the function of internal affairs and 
you know, you really need a, a something separate from the police department that has the authority to discipline the department. And yeah. the MPD doesn't have that. You know, there's no, there's nobody calling them out. Um, and Except so I'm for you. Taking that on as my role, <laughs> of, of being like, hey guys, there's a lot of bullshit in your department. Fix it, or I'm going to bring it to the public and tell the truth about it. And and I'm not asking you to like it. Now the oldest, you know? the oldest story in your movie was, you know, f- a few years old, but you actually ended up adding in that last one, um, which happened inside of this year, 2017 to it just because it happened. So let me ask you this. This one's done. You, this one's going. It's very successful. It's doing well. Are you going to keep up and at it? Or are you still, I mean, are you, are you, is there a chance at a sequel or possibly another series? You know, that's or? a good question. I, I, not at this point, man. I mean, you're just going to you know, go this with this. Well, it was a hard movie to make. De- definitely. I mean, definitely. And the shitty part I, is, is we hope there's no more material for you to make it. But unfortunately I think there's going to be some more material. <laughs> Well, that, you know, if the right situation presented itself and the funding fell into place, you know, I'd consider it. But, you know, I mean, w- this movie was shot on weekends while I was working full time, you know. Yes. I was working in, in Los Angeles, you know, heavy, you know, heavy hours. And then, you know, I'd drive up on Friday night after I'd worked 10 hours and, you shoot know, get film. in and roll into Vegas at 2 a.m., you know, uh, shoot all day Saturday, shoot all day Sunday, and then go back, drive back to Los Angeles and go to that work. night, roll in around 3 a.m. and then go to be at work by about 8.30 a.m. So oh, wow. it was like good, probably a year and a half, two years of that. So Jesus. it was it was, ex- it was excruciating. It was very tiresome. It was, I mean, it was very tiring. And, um, you know, and I, I'm definitely really glad to be done with it. And I'm glad that it's successful and getting out there. But, you know, I, I, I certainly hope that the next movie isn't quite as difficult as this one. And also, I mean, it was just, you know, it was a difficult shoot in that, you know, we used a lot of drone footage and, and those drone shoots were never, never fun because, you know, we go out on the strip with a drone before they had the laws in place and half the time you end up in handcuffs, you know. Well, that's know, good footage. I'm sure, I'm sure you'll be able to sell a lot of that because like you said, now the yeah. laws, now the laws are up. So I could see that being your, that footage being reused as stock footage for years that's to right. come. But I'll tell you, like that's, that, that takes its toll too. It's like, you know, because I think, I was probably put in handcuffs four times doing the drone footage. Oh, my and goodness. And all four times. No, I was never, like, arrested for it. But, but detained. Because I wasn't doing anything illegal. Like, the laws weren't in place yet, you know? And so, but what they do is they handcuff you, and then they call their lieutenant out there, and he goes, oh, no, let him go. There's no laws. But they needed to make sure I wasn't a terrorist trying to bomb the Bellagio, I guess, you know? Yeah, definitely. Which, frankly, I mean, I understand that. I was always... I, I never got shippy with those guys. I always said, I understand you got a job to do. And more often than not, those LVMPD officers were reasonable. I understand it, man. I mean, think about this. You got somebody flying a little robot over the Bellagio. <laughs> I mean, know, they want to know who you are, yeah. If I were them, yeah, if I were them, I'd have to check that out too. And, you know, so we had a couple, of, we had an encounter with Homeland Security. Interesting. And, uh, and you know, and those cops weren't bad. I mean, they weren't... Um, you know, they, they were doing their job, and I never felt like, you know, they were not, you know, they weren't Mark Ballingers, you know. They no, I ran, into, I ran into some cool cops uh, this week. I had uh, actually had some guy was running from the cops and ended up jumping into my yard, <laughs> of all things. you really? know. And yeah, they ended up catching them in my yard and my property, and uh, that was uh, Wednesday night at about 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, it was a whole, it woke the whole house up, and the helicopters were out, and the guy, you know, Jeez. like I said, there was a foot pursuit, and he ended up running right up, right over the wall to my property, and then once he jumped in, he couldn't get out. The walls were too big. It was a you know because the property oh, behind wow. me is elevated, so my wall is ah. like twenty five feet. He didn't realize that, and he fell off the top of it, and he was stuck in my Jeez. property. <laughs> so, but wow. I had to run outside and get make sure my dogs didn't kill him. You know what I mean? It was crazy. So I ended up you know having to sit out there with the cops for about an hour and you know do paperwork well, just, and shit like some heck was like running from the cops yeah it was like crazy it was like it was like it was ridiculous you know it was like you know yeah. it was you know but like i said those guys were all super cool so I, i've definitely met my fair share of you know good cops more than more than uh, you know that i've met bad ones you know i've only had a few no. bad run-ins with the police myself so but i do know it exists i do know it's out there and i don't want to take away from anyone's bad experience you know and that was no. The yeah, other and, thing and too. I always say it, yeah. You know, I always the, say the problem isn't that most LVMBE cops are bad because they're not. The problem is the ones who are 
the Mark Bellingers, the Kyle Freds, and the Jared Caspers get away with it because the LVMPD doesn't hold them accountable and because crap cops like Michelle Jots and Internal Affairs and Christopher Little um, let them get away with it too. It's just the system is set up to let crap cops, bad cops, get away with things. And, and that's, that's the, the other thing too. That's the problem with the LVMPD, you know? Um, so, um, you know, that's, that's the real issue and that's what my movie I think is fundamentally about is, you know, these people work for us. The cops yeah. work for us. And it's just in Las Vegas, the bad cops, they run amok and they get away with it. They're not held accountable. And um, that's not acceptable. Well, you the know, other they, thing, they too, work. that I wanted to talk about with you is, you know, that what I respect about you a lot, too, is, is, you know, we talk on the phone a lot, you know, off the record and stuff. Right. And, you know, it's, uh, you know, we talked about, we've talked about other police shootings and you're like, well, that was, you know, like you're, you're smart enough to know the difference between, you know, like, well, that one's probably justified or that one, you know, right. would probably different. So you don't cheapen up, you know, these, these, uh, the ones like the ones in your movie with, with just going against every police shooting, no. you know what I mean? Like, th- I don't think which, which holds value to the like, ones like, you know, yeah. that you're reporting I don't think that's on. Fair. I mean, I think, like I said, I mean, I think, you know, a lot of shootings. I mean, have been justified, you know. Yeah, and it's crazy out there. They have a they have a very crazy job, you know. And yeah. So it's that's not the thing. an easy job, man. And I, and I mean, I and I know that, but I do think people are a little too quick to let them out. I think cops in general, and and they have very strong unions, and they've been very effective in putting that we put our lives out on the line thing out there. And so I think because they've been so effective in putting that out there, there's a lot of people who just think that no matter what they do, they're justified and the cops walk on water. And I disagree with that. You know, yes. I think, I think there's been some very strong propaganda in this country. Um, that, that just kind of like convinced, you know, to put out there that, and I think there's a lot of people who just believe that the cops are justified no matter what. I mean, I hear from these people every day on Facebook. Well, it's God. crazy too. And there's, you know, there's both extremes and then there's like the reasonable middle, you know, there's, Right. There's the ones that think they're always justified no matter what. And then there's the ones that think right. they're always in the bad no matter what. Right. And I don't, I don't, I'm not on board with that. Like, yeah. he goes on my, on my page and goes, F cops, F the police or whatever. You don't see me liking those posts. No. Right and I see that, that you know, you, and they don't last very long either. They don't stick around. You know, you're always quick yeah. to delete them and stuff. But, you know, like I said, there's those guys. And then there's the ones on the page that are like, Hey Randy, you know why don't you try wearing the, you know? And it's like, dude, relax. Yeah. You know, it's not anti-cop. Well, right? I also just kind of sigh because I've heard them. I mean, like it's like they don't understand what a cliche they are. You know, it's like I've heard that a hundred times. It's like, why don't you put on a badge and go out there and fight the bad guys? You know, it's like, you know what, man? <laughs> I didn't sign up for this job. Yeah, they did you know? So it's like, you know. The bottom line is they signed up to be cops. They signed up to deal with, um, to do this job. And so, and, but the other thing that I think, um, like I say, I think there's a lot of very strong machinery in place that like puts out this idea that like this is a super dangerous job. And no question it is. But statistically speaking, like I said, I mean, like, you know, being a lump, um, being a lumberjack is actually, the most dangerous job. Yeah. You know, that has the highest death rate. And I definitely have known loggers who can go five minutes without talking about how they put their lives on the line yeah. like, um, every day, you know, but, and then just so many cops remind you of that every 10 seconds and share old Sheriff Doug Gillespie loved that line. These officers put their lives on the line, you know, every, I mean, my God, the guy couldn't go two minutes without saying that. And, you know, there's that one speech where he's out in front of Metro, you know, at the podium, and there's like spittle coming out of his mouth as he says it. You know, yeah. it's just so insane. It's fired up. And so, yeah, and like so filled with like righteous indignation and, you know, and, and um, so I just think that, um, I mean, I do think it's a dangerous job, but I don't think that means that everything you do is justified. And I think that there have been many situations at the LVMPD where they could have just tackled somebody or or done something other than just shoot them and i haven't seen the body cam footage yet but it certainly seems to me that you know the guy was naked and talking about killing himself this was a mental health issue 
And no it just doubt. seems like, you know, I mean, I just don't understand why, um, you know, maybe the body footage will come out and, um, and justify and, you know, it, tell the story. Maybe, but, but, but I mean, on the surface, it, it just seems like a situation where did you really have to do that. Yeah. You know? Um, couldn't, can't you just run out and tackle them? Like, uh, like it's a football game? <laughs> there was, uh, here in Vegas, you know, like I said, I have that small media group, and, you know, I keep an eye on these things. You know, and right. so in the last, like, two, two and a half weeks, we've had three officer-involved shootings, like, right, like, within a week of each other, you know, with under 10 days That's right, apart. they're on number 16 now, eight months in, so, on number 16. That's one every two weeks. You know, it was crazy, because you watched the video from, say, number, we'll call it number 14, you know. Uh, right. And you know that one, they're in a they're in a car chase, and then the guy bails off foot, and he tries to run. That guy gets out of the car, shooting at the cops. You know what I mean? So you're right. like, okay, cool, like fuck, him. you know, that's a bad guy trying to kill cops. Right. Fuck him, you know, they shot him, whatever. Then you watch the other one, uh, fifteen, the one that was just days before this last one, and that was the guy in the black pickup truck, and he clearly pulls out a gun and starts shooting at the cops. So it's like, but even on those two, where it's very clear with the body cam footage. It's very clear that this guy put him, you know, didn't made a stupid decision. You right. know, the one guy died and one guy lived. But even in those two, you still have people on social media that go on there and are like, fuck these cops. And it's like, dude, can't you watch? Like, yeah. you, you make yourself look stupid and you make the whole well, cause no, look stupid. I'm, pretty quiet. I'm, I, I'm silent on that. You know, but it's you crazy because I, I watch them. Yeah. You know, Metro has a, you know, Metro themselves upload these to YouTube and then they share it so the public can see them. So you read right. those comments on like the original post, and it's like, dude, these people that are like, okay, you're just anti-cop. That's stupid. You know what I mean? Right. And then you no, I see, agree with you. I, I, I'm not, I'm not behind being anti. Oh, of course. And, but I'm just saying, it's so thing, funny to see how people is, you are. Know, you know, what happened in Vegas? I mean, we spend, I mean, 20, 30 minutes of the movie is devoted to showing one of the best cops in LVMPD history, Larry Burns. You know? Yeah. I'm a big Larry Burns fan, and I, I honestly believe that if he'd been elected sheriff. Things would be a lot different today in Vegas. And I it's think, tough. You know, it's tough to I tell. Think, no, no, and I yeah. agree with you. I agree with you. What I'm saying what's tough is it's tough. Uh, it's, it's, we're in a bad time. You know, we're on pace in Vegas right now to break last year's homicide rate, which was a record. I think, you know, right. be, like it was like an 11 year, uh, you know, hadn't been that bad in 11 years. It was up 91% last year, right? 91%, you know. And, uh, yeah, 91%. And violent crimes were up 50%, I believe. Crazy stats. Um, Those are big numbers. Yeah, you know, and, and yeah, we're on pace to we're on pace to surpass that this year. You know, and every every day, whether it's you know not an officer involved shooting, but there's you know there's, it's just a it's a tough climate right now in Vegas. And it's getting really bad. So someone needs to come in and, and do something. You know, and I know the community as well, a whole. I, I I personally think that Larry Burns being elected was their best chance. Yeah. And now I and, and and I think that since that didn't happen. Um, my honest feeling is that the Department of Justice needs to take this department over. It's that broken. Yeah. I mean, the officer-involved shootings are off the, ch- the charts. The Tachi Farmer Brown is one of the most egregious and unnecessary and disgraceful. I mean, it's just a department that lets something like that happen. Um, and, and, you know, well, the crime rate shooting up and well, the murder rate shooting up. It's just, it's all a little too much, man. I mean... <laughs> It's hard to get too rah rah about your police department when, when you see videos like this. Well, that's what I'm saying. The community is so egregious. The community's up in arms, and the community wants something to be done, and no one knows what to do. That's the problem out here. Is you know, like I said, that all these these numbers, these stats, it's getting worse out here. And you know, the the community. When you talk to people, you know, I talk to people in you know bars at my office, at barber shops, out and about, you know, over dinners at, right. you know, over, you know, whatever, just being out and about. I'm pretty social, you know, and, right. and, I, and this is a topic that, you know, randomly just always seems to come up. Right. What are we going to do to make our town safer? And there's no answer. Well, I think that, I think the, the, the beginning, oh, sorry, I'm walking my dog and I just dropped his leash. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, all right. Here he goes. Um, all good now. Um, I definitely think, and what I've tried to do is just make people aware of how truly um, <laughs> big the problem is and how truly bad the LBMPD has been at holding their officers accountable. And uh, so I think awareness is the first issue. Like, I think they need to know, they need to cut through all this propaganda 
a lot of which is put out by the LBMPD, and um, and see the reality of the situation and see their police department for what it really is. And what it really is is an organization that lets bad cops off the hook left and right. Well, it was funny and during the... Uh, go ahead. Well, no, I mean, I've even, you know, officer... Well, did I lose you? Randy, Ramsey, I lost you, bud. I think you hit mute. Let's see if he calls right back. We'll try to get him on back on the line. That's Ramsey Dennison, the uh, director of the movie What Happened in Vegas. It's a pretty good movie. I mean, not pretty good. It's a very good movie that I happen to see um, at a, at a film festival here in town. And it's just really powerful, and it goes into, like we've been talking about, if you, you know, catching on late, it's been uh, talking about police corruption in Vegas. So, I don't know, it's a tough call, man. The climate out here is so hot, we're going to try to get him back on the line now. Hello? Hey, I lost you there. Yeah, sorry about that. I was, I was meeting my phone freaked out and just shut off. Like, it not only, like, cut out, but, like, the power went down, and I thought it was dead, but it wasn't. Huh. Like, a third full still. So I don't know what happened there. But, uh, but anyway, what I was saying is, I mean, there's four, even former LVMPD cops who say that a department, like, between, you know, a quarter and a third of LVMPD cops are bad cops, road cops. And there's other people who say that it's kind of well-known that if you want to... Uh, <laughs> fly by um, and, you know, and work on an department that's not going to hold you accountable that the LVMPD is a good department to be at. Well, you were and saying, I completely agree. You were saying, I you mean, know, the step one being awareness. And it was funny because after the movie at the screening, you did that question, uh, you know, Q&A and had the good panel up there. But the moderator was also uh, the attorney, Stephen Stubbs. That's and, right. And yeah. someone, someone from the crowd had got up to the microphone and they said something about, uh, mandatory death penalty for all cops that break the law, you know, or kill some, whatever, whatever, right. you know, but I think you know, that was uh, Jay Jackson, the black Panther. If I yeah. Remember. But it was funny because, uh, you know, the attorney, Stephen Stubbs his his immediate response was like, you want the death penalty. How about just accountability to start? You know, that's right. And yeah. it was just like, it was like, yeah, I think that was a good response. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was funny cause it was like, you see, like you want to go all the way. There. Let's just start baby stepping this thing and just, let's just get accountability right. Then you could work your way up, you know, and I think the death penalty obviously right. is a bit extreme, you know, but um, they accountability. They, I mean, that's the thing is there is no accountability in that department. So there's an illusion of accountability. There's, you um, know, the accountability factor for the people that are, you know, making mistakes. And, and I think the public, the public needs, and I don't want to see the wrong guy get it. You know, I don't want to see someone made an example of that. They just need to take the next person that makes a mistake and just say, you know what, we're going to treat you like a citizen. And you're going to right. get tried and arrested like a citizen would. Because I'll tell you what, uh, you know, I'm a bail bondsman. I've been a bail bondsman for a lot of years. I, You know, and uh, I do. I used to do my own bounty hunting. And I got in an right. on-the-job shooting that I won't go into too much detail about because my lawyer would kill me. But it's over. You know, this was in 2010. Uh, but I did get into, a, a you know, an on-the-job shooting. And... It was really weird. I didn't know you were a bounty hunter, Mikey. That's pretty badass. Well, yeah, I haven't done my own bounty hunting in years, you know, but I've been in the, okay. I've been around the business for so long. That's how I started. But, right. you know, even a Metro officer came up to me that night after the shooting while I was detained, you know, and said, hey, man, you know, if you were a police officer, this would be being handled a totally different way. You know, the guy that you were after had a felony warrant and blah, blah, blah. Right. And I ended up getting arrested. And it was right. crazy to see in that paperwork, this guy had a felony warrant and was wanted right. on felonies, pulled a gun out on us, long story short, whatever. No one died. You know, no one even got shot. It was just a shootout. You know, no one even got hit. Right. But it was crazy to see in the court paperwork that they're saying that this guy's the victim. You know what I mean? I'm like, wait a minute. I'm out here right. working, doing my job, what I'm licensed to do, and now I'm the defendant? How the fuck did that happen? And even a cop... Well, that's the same thing that happened to me. I was yeah. trying to do something right. I was trying to call 911 and, and, and get these officers, you know. I just thought what was going on was torture. I thought this was cruel. I thought that these officers 
that Mark Bellinger, Kyle Fred, and Jared Casper, instead of laughing at this guy and telling him that his mama raised an F up, I thought they should get the guy in the car and get him down to the station. Yeah. I, you know? And so I called 911 to report them and to try to have that happen. And uh, the next thing you know, I'm getting the shit beat out of me. And I'm the criminal. I'm the one that, you know, they're, that they're writing a BS police report out that, 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 that makes things up that didn't happen, like saying that I shoved the officers or whatever. I mean, how do you go from calling, like making a phone call and then all of a sudden you're shoving officers? Yeah. I mean, and, and also if you look at my background, like there's no, I've never been arrested, never had any encounters. With the, it was just like, it was a ludicrous situation on paper. And I mean, there's been cops that it just kind of like shake their head at the gall of this situation and the lack of common sense and the fact that internal affairs decided this was okay. And, um, and these garbage officers are still out there. I mean, they lied and they got away with it. I mean, Mark Bellinger's still out there with a badge, Kyle Fred, Jared Casper. These guys are thugs. They're junk. They're yeah. crap. And they're LVMPD officers, you know? And I mean, if they're going to, and this is, if they're going to do something like this, think about what else these, these guys have done, you know? They're thugs. They're liars. Well, you've, they're, you've, these are people who will, who will lie on police reports. They will, um, you know, they're, they're, they're bullies. I mean, they were bullying this guy. They're bad officers. And, 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 they're, and all three of them are still working for the LVMPD, as far as I know, because they don't hold their officers accountable. And that is a crap system. And I also think some responsibility should, you know, for these um, the internal affairs department le deciding this is okay. They weren't held accountable either for making this absurd decision. And I'll be honest with you, I want some accountability, man. I want this uh, something done about this. I want Mark Bellinger discipline. You know, I don't care if I have to go to the governor, the FBI. I mean, now that I have this movie done, I I want to do something about this. It doesn't sit well with me years later that these officers lied spun the situation around on me and got away with it. It's not okay. Yeah. You know, and they did it. They flat out did it. And, uh, and I'm not okay with it. You know? <laughs> well, again, and, like and I said, lucky for me that lucky for me that you're okay. Lucky for me right. that they did it to you and you are okay. Because, you know, for me, I end up getting the what happened in Vegas movie out of it. That's true. You know, I mean, and everybody and else did. Like, I mean, I, and then the truth is I'm not dead. I'm not handicapped. I'm not paralyzed. I got the crap beat out of me. I couldn't breathe very well for a couple minutes, and I had to spend a couple nights in jail and, um, and had to read a police report filled with lies and, and, and stuff like this. But, but you're right. I mean, I'm healthy, and, and the movie happened because of this. Um, but at the same time, man, it's, every time I think about the fact that Mark Bellinger, Kyle Fred, and Jared Casper got away with this, <laughs> it, it makes me angry, you know? And it so, reminds me of why I made this movie in the first place, which is that, to point out that garbage thugs like this need to be held accountable, you know? So the movie's done now, and it's out. Now, what are we going to be doing? How can more people see it? What can um, you question. tell us right now? Because I know it's still, right. we're still going through okay, some so, issues. So yeah, so we're, uh, um, like I said, we're going to be coming out in Vegas in September. And then um, September 29th, the movie's going to be playing theatrically in New York City. Oh, wow. Uh, man. Yeah, and then um, on October 6th, uh, Los Angeles. Um, so, so yeah, so, so, and then after that, um, you know, a couple months after that, it'll, 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 it'll be out on, you know, other platforms like VOD, uh, you know, like Amazon, iTunes, et cetera, hopefully Netflix. Man, um, I'd love to see it on Netflix. And, yeah. Yeah, I know. Everybody always wants to see it on Netflix because it's free. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's like, I don't get that excited about Netflix because I understand that that means people are seeing our movie for free. Oh, really? I thought, <laughs> I thought Netflix paid you every time someone watched it or something. No, like that. Ne well, no, Netflix does kind of flat licensing deals. Oh. Netflix is really great for um, original productions, you know? Yeah. Like if you get, you know, these like Netflix originals, man, I mean, they're like, they're awesome. I mean, like things like House of Cards and things like this. So they, those are like top flight, top dollar. There's a, the there, crop, but, but one the of my favorite is ones like, is a stranger you know, things. But, but the reality is there's not much money for independent filmmakers in licensing their movie to Netflix. I believe a lot of the deals are around eight to 10,000. 
for an independent film. So gotcha. That's not that's not great money. Well, either way, I'll um, download it. If it comes on iTunes, I'll yeah, download it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to well, watch uh, it for free anymore. But uh, so we're going to be seeing it soon, uh, and it's going to be out in Vegas. And you, I'm sure you'll have some sort of press release when it when it when, definitely when, yeah. when and where to catch it. Right. So yeah, I'm just not. Uh, I don't want to give out the theater right now because I. You know, I don't want to hear that, you know, the LVMTD went to that theater tomorrow and all of a sudden the deal's off. Yeah. Um, I, <laughs> I don't want you to. I don't want to see that happen. Yeah, I, I, I really don't want that to happen again. Um, so, um, you know, and, and it's interesting. It's like, I don't know. I mean, think about it. Like the Eclipse Theater, they had the opportunity to show, you know, a vibrant independent film that's about their community and, uh, they back you know, out. Like a, yeah, and, and, and it's about Las Vegas, it's about the community, that addresses the citizens' concerns, and instead of showing that, they're probably going to show some piece-of-crap action movie with, like, Vin Diesel in it. Or I was going to say, you know, yeah, where some he, bullshit. Where he, where he runs around and, like, battles spaceships or something, and it's like, so, you know, I mean, uh, you know, and, and I, I guess I'm fortunate that not every... Um, theater like runs in fear and ca- is cowers to the LVMPD like the Eclipse and Ruth Jensen and, and their owner are doing. But, um, you know, it's just kind of a shame. It's a bummer. I mean, they could have been a part of something vibrant and cool about their community. And instead they're going to be showing some, probably some Vin Diesel spaceship movie. <laughs> yeah. Some bullshit. Like- it's just really, I mean, you know, but whatever they, uh, you know, they were interested in, um, you know, and, and not not uh, rocking the boat with the LVMPD, and given their reputation of, uh, you know, given the LVMPD's history and reputation, I guess I can understand that. But I think it's, um, I do think it's kind of unfortunate that government officials. I mean, you know, our country was founded on freedom of speech. I mean, yes. we were founded on the idea of freedom and freedom of speech. And you know, this is not third century Russia, man. You you don't like. Public officials, you know, government, we're supposed to be able to criticize you, and you're not supposed to go down to the theater and uh, try to stop that from happening. And I think it's really, um, un- I think it's really kind of disgraceful if that's what happened. And I think it's also disgraceful that, you know, the Eclipse were cowards and, and kind of let the LVMPD win. If that's what well, happened, that's the thing. Know? We if if this last election has taught us anything, it's it's that the freedom of speech thing is going out the window, you know, and, and both sides right. were, were guilty to that. You know, both sides played a huge part in, you know, trying to cover up the other side, you know, and saying this and censoring that. And, you know, there was riots yeah. at colleges because uh, people didn't want to hear speakers come. You know, it was just right crazy. And it's sad, man, because, I mean, you know, there's a lot of beautiful, wonderful things about America, and I think freedom is just, my God, free. is there anything more beautiful than freedom? You know, but you the know. thing is, is we have a lot of, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Entitled people that have never traveled outside America. I've never seen people living without freedom, you know, and they think, right? Well, you know, they say freedom. They're like, oh, man, I, you know, I, I can't, you know, speed down, do a 90 down the freeway. I thought it was a free country. They're idiots, you know, because they've never been to a right. third world country or they've never been to a country, you know, like that's crazy. You know I mean? I've been to a lot of places outside the country and I've seen a lot where a lot of times I'm like, well, I can't wait to get back home, you know, just because right. of, you know, I know with, with, you know, for the most part with my country, I'm, I'm in a better place, you know? Right. So yeah. when I hear a lot yeah, of that I people going, that, I, you know, when I go to like Tijuana after a day or two, exactly. You know, you know and, and when I hear I, people I, I talk bad yeah, about yeah, America, yeah, I, I don't like it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and you're happy to get home and you always kind of like realize what a, how fortunate we are, man. I mean, we're lucky. This country is wonderful and beautiful and uh, freedom and freedom of speech is a big part of that. And a big part of that is supposed to be the right to protest your government and criticize your government. And, um, but I think there's people who don't, there's obviously a lot of people who don't like that no. and, um, and try to stop it. And I, I think when they do that, they need to be called out. Well, you know, so there's that, you know, with the police on the local level, you know what I mean? And then just to just to throw the curveball at you, you know, you see on the international stage, you know, you got that football player, you know, Kaepernick. Colin Kaepernick. You know, he's blackballed. He is fucking out, dude. He is unemployed as of today still. I think it's really unfortunate, man. I mean, because 
like I said, I mean, the, the NFL, like I said, I mean, you got guys, I mean, there's been many guys who've battered their spouses and, and you know, and, and they, they get a second chance in the NFL real fast. You know, Leonard Little, guy for the Rams, got drunk, killed a woman. Yeah. You know? Um, Michael Vick you know, ran a and, fucking and, dog yeah, fighting Michael ring. Vick, you know, and, and, and like he killed dogs. Yeah. And, and so and so those people get a second chance, but Colin Kaepernick, a guy who doesn't who's really never been anything but a good citizen, um, you know, and a lot of people don't know this, Kaepernick was an excellent student in yeah. college, um, high school. Like I, I believe he's close to even close to a straight A student. UNR. You know, people get people get fooled by the tattoos and the and the hair and stuff, but Colin Kaepernick's a good guy. I mean, and, and, and I believe that he had good intentions. And, uh, and this guy's not, and, um, you know. And that's what I tell them when, they, guy, when they bring up the guy. Michael this Vicks. He didn't do anything wrong, and he's being blackballed for exercising his American right to, like, protest the government. And, and that I was the thing. it's really sad. It's really sad. I mean, when, when you have people who batter their spouses, who's that guy, Greg Hardy, that linebacker? Yep. You know? He got a second chance, you know, and, and, and who's this Ezekiel Elliott guy, you know, I mean, like the same thing. It's like, but, but this guy exercises his American right to protest the government. And what happens? Like shut down, bro. Like, people, people just want to like throw him in a, in a sea of sharks or something. Now it's like, like he's evil. And it's like, it's like, no, he's not evil. This is a good guy. You know, yeah, I tell everyone who, too. It's, this is a guy. This guy doesn't go out and get in trouble and get in fights and 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 make it rain in strip clubs at four a.m. and cause fights. And so, that's not Colin Kaepernick. It never has been. He's yeah. a good citizen, and he's a good, well-intentioned guy. And it's like, and I actually think that you know I don't necessarily agree with what he did, but I think he has the right to do it. Well, that's the thing and too. I, is everybody's like, you know, you definitely punished him. You definitely have the right to do it, but I guess the I guess the issue is he did it on someone else's time dime. You know what I mean? He I did it while on the clock. The only thing I think people should consider is what is Colin Kaepernick? Maybe 27, 28 years old. Yeah, I don't know. He's yeah, he he might be twenty seven or twenty eight, man. I mean, you know, he's not. And I believe he has a good heart, but I mean, dude, everybody in their twenties does some stupid things shit. That they regret later, <laughs> and it's yeah. sad that it's sad that his. He didn't. He didn't smack a woman. He didn't kill a dog. He didn't do any of this stuff. He he <laughs> he exercised his Amer- his rights as an American citizen, and he might be unemployable because of that. I think that's awful. Ridiculous. Well, Ramsey, I don't want to eat up too much more of your Sunday yeah, night. I know yeah. you got work in the morning, and you're out with your dog. So you know we're going to be looking for the movie in September again, and I'll you know uh, yep. we'll release the uh, you know everything, all the information on our end too to get it out there for you. And uh, thanks again for killing some time with me, Randy or Ramsey. Yeah, and uh, you know, no, we'll uh, good talking with you. we'll catch up later, man. Thank you. All right, thanks, Mike. Always good talking with you, buddy. All right, take All it right. easy. Good night.